Hey guys, it's Carissa here with Inky Fairy Designs. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and I just want to say a huge welcome to all of my new subscribers. This is, um, I think, the first video that I'm putting out after the big mixed media blog hop we had last week. So thank you guys so much for subscribing, and I hope you enjoy what you see here on the channel going forward. So this is a video that I filmed um, about a month ago. Like I said, I have had some videos um, kind of just sitting waiting for me to find the time and energy to edit. Um, so I was practicing or playing on this Grumbacher mixed media paper sampler that they had sent a few artists um, back in January actually. Um, they just sent this sampler paper and um, asked us to play around with it and give us um, give them their fe our feedback. And so um, I've done all of that and now I'm going to go ahead and um, put this video out there and let you guys see kind of how it came together. So I started with some deco art media gesso you saw in the beginning and I gessoed my pages because that's what I do whenever I'm working in a journal of some type. And then I pulled out those ink colors. I think I had a variety of deco art media and some golden colors. I'll have a list of all of the supplies below in the description box. So um, I may not like point them out as I'm going through the voiceover, but I will definitely be letting you know what I'm doing. So I picked out these colors and um, I just put a few dots on the paper and then I'm using a, um, uh, what is that, a paint scraper? <laughs> uh, I don't know what it's called, but I'm using that to scrape the paint around on the paper. And I really didn't like it, so I'm trying to wipe some of it off with a baby wipe through a stencil. Um, I did actually heat set it a little bit, so a lot of the paint is already dry, but some of the paint was still wet and I was able to get kind of this grungy kind of lift going here. And um, it didn't go completely white back to the white background. So that was kind of devastating to me. But like I said, and like you've always, you will hear me say if you've not been a subscriber for a while, is that mixed media to me is all about pushing past the ugly. Like, this is super ugly. I'm not even going to lie to you guys right now. I am doing this and I am working on this and I am thinking I am just taking all of these steps and it's getting worse and worse and worse. Like, why did I bring this blue color in? I don't know. But I did, and now look, I'm bringing the stencil back, and that paint is still wet, so I can wipe it off a little bit easier than I did before. And I really do like the effect that it's giving me here, so, I mean, it's getting there. So you'll see that I will uh, bring in my heat tool and dry the layers in between. Uh, that's just the way that I prefer to work, um, but I don't want to show you that whole entire process of drying. You'll just see, like, a little bit of it knowing that that is a point where I've stopped and dried before moving on to the next layer like this one where I'm just doing um, some mark making with this like I don't know what color it is it's like this um, orange yellow orange yellow it might be like a yellow ochre um, and I'm just doing some mark making some little crosses on my um, paper there and I I really like that color, but I'm not sure if it was going with like all the colors I have in the background. And like my canvas last week, which I did month after I did this, I'm telling you, like this is a color scheme that I am desperately trying to make work. So when something isn't working, I bring in some white. So this is, um, I believe, titanium white by Golden, or not Golden, um, by Deco Art Media. And I love the Punchinella. I love using that as a stencil. I've had those for years. Um, so if you guys don't have that in your stash, uh, it's just a great, I mean, there's so many stencils now that are called Punchinella um, based off of this. Um, so you could totally pick up some of those or just um, find some Punchinella, Punchinella like on Etsy or uh, I think I got it on an Etsy somewhere like years ago. So I thought it needed a contrasting color and I added that red and I set it aside because I was done with that one. I didn't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> I think I had worked it to the point where I was really not happy with it. So I decided to move on to the second sheet that I had and I'm using some Dina Wakely Media um, paint colors for this one. 
and look at there it's like the same colors so I'm using a teal or turquoise and then that olive which I'm I, I had just gotten it and you know you get a new paint color and you're like super excited to use this new paint color and so I've been super excited to use this olive I like olive in general um, as a color but when I mix it with this um, this turquoise I don't <laughs> I'm not happy but it is what it is and so here I go again I'm using this technique where I am wiping off some of the paint with the baby wipe through the stencil I really like that it works best when the paint is still wet so just a FYI there um, and now I got this uh, Brutus Monroe surface spray in sidewalk and I like I, I got this because I wanted to try it it's a mixed media spray and it's permanent so I love a spray that I can use like mid point or even in the very beginning of a piece because most sprays that I've had in my stash are water reactive so if I use them like in an under layer they're gonna get totally whatever I use them through is gonna get wiped away so I was playing with that it was too light you don't really see it um, but I like it I think I'll, I'm gonna have to get some more colors of it so now I'm bringing in a background stamp with my homemade archival black soot ink and I love to bring text onto my projects whether it's like a book text that I collage in or usually I have um, a couple different text stamps that I use this one is the script one by just right stamps which is one of my favorites and so I just stamp it randomly around that page okay so we're back to the first one I've had enough time to kind of like let it ruminate in my mind that I can move past this and I bring in this Hansa yellow medium I thought it would provide this like beautiful like pop of contrast and I was so wrong you'll see and so I'm going in and I was going to do some blocking out uh, with that yellow but I think the problem it may have worked if it was um, a little bit more um, or a little bit less transparent a little bit more opaque and then I tried to mix it with the Dino Wakely Media turquoise. Ugh, that wasn't a pretty green at all. So the good thing about having all those layers of acrylic paints underneath is that I can wipe it right away and it's gone. So I can start over, which is what I do. And I'm going to bring in this titanium white again. And I'm still going to end up blocking out. So where I stamped those circles, which are a Dino Weekly Media um, set, it's like the circles set. Um, again, everything and their correct names will be listed in the description box below. But here I am. I stamped those circles on the areas that I wanted to keep, that kind of pattern and color and everything. And I'm going to wipe I'm going to white out everything else. Everything else, it was just so busy. There was no rhyme or reason. I didn't see anything um, that I wanted to keep other than what I have peeking through those circles. And this is such a great technique for when you kind of throw a bunch of things on a paper and you're just not happy with it or you just think it's like the ugliest thing in the world. Um, don't throw it away. It can be salvageable. This is one of the greatest ways to do that either by, um, you know, using some stamps to block out some of that print and color because some of it in small little portions is really pretty. Um, or you could use like a mask and um, paint around the mask and then remove the mask and that area will show through. So I wanted to highlight those circles a little bit more because I painted over them a little bit with the stamp. So the stamp kind of got away. And so I just went around them with the Stabilo Marksall pencil and then activated it with water and um, created some drips that go down my page, which I absolutely love. Breaks up that white and just gives it a little bit more texture. So I got a bunch of these Brio Reese paint, paint writers when they were on Mega Clarence at Hobby Lobby. And I swear to you, I have like one in every color. So I pulled out this gold one and um, I just did some scribble writing. I don't even know what I was writing at this point. It's been too long. But I just did some of that 
uncomfortable writing that you can't really read. Obviously, I can't read it, and I'm looking right at it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I think I like I'd like to do that around like the circles and stuff. I think it just adds a little bit more texture. And the paint writers, these particular ones, um, they dry raised. So you can see, I'm showing you kind of like the texture. You can see there's like it's almost like those puffy paints that I grew up with. It's really, but not suit, not as puffy. It's cool though. <laughs> so I wanted to just add some of that gold into my so gold. So just tie them in. Um, so it's not just like some random color that I threw on top, but yeah, I think that's all I do for that one. And finally I'm happy with it. So now I'm coming back to this other one, which I not too like sad about. I think the colors are kind of working, but I'm bringing in blushing, which is like my secret. Hmm my secret, my secret <laughs> weapon of colors when I'm just not liking something. This color I love to bring in, especially when I have like a blue green background for some reason. And it's probably because it's a contrasting color. It just, it just really pops against that background. And so I tried to use the Dina Wakely uh, mark makers, but I think those are really great when you have like thick layers of paints and you just want to scribble into it. Um, but for the marks that I wanted to make on my page, I went back to a paintbrush. It's just a flat paintbrush. And um, I'm just going to make some little marks around. And I kind of cascade it down my page. Um, that's one way to kind of create this cohesive pattern on a journal page even though these are like super tiny skinny ones um you know just kind of cascade it down the page so that your eye has something to move around now i'm going to bring in my posca white paint pen which is my favorite pen right now to use um <clears throat> excuse me on my journal pages and I'm just creating these little stars that I like to make. And I love doing this like after I have a bunch of texture on it because it catches. And when it catches like a bumpy area, the paint just like splatters around. And it just creates this beautiful um, thing that I could never do on my own because it's completely random. It's beautiful. Now I'm doing some doodling and I am just doodling circles around the um, the paint the blushing paint that I added and then I'm also going to add some teeny tiny little crosses on my page um, those are kind of like my favorite doodles right now it's just like circling one particular um, shape that is that I created with paint on my page and then adding these little crosses uh, randomly around those areas. So I think that's about all the doodling that I do here. And then I'm going to bring in um, some of the, let's see, oh, I'm going to go around the edge with the uh, black so just to kind of frame it out and um, could just give it a little bit of a finishing look. So now you can see I'm just kind of looking at it. I'm wondering to myself, is this done? Does it need anything else? I love to add small talk stickers to my pages. So I decided to put some of those on here. And um, one thing I, one reason I like to do this is because I don't have to worry about like writing on my journal page, even though um, having my own handwriting is really cool. The other reason is because there's like a ton of those stickers and I've had them forever and it's a great way to use them up. And so I chose this uh, quote from it. It says, replace fear of the unknown with curiosity. And I always tend to put things on my pages that um, kind of speak to me uh, right now in this moment. And that's why I do like to date um, the things that I do, which I just noticed I didn't date this, but I know when I did it um, because I have the film uh, date so I can put the date on there. But anyway, um, I like to date things because of that, because of the things that I write on them, quotes that I use mean something to me in that moment. And right now I'm working through, um, I have a big fear, uh, like personality. Like I'm afraid of everything. Um, and even afraid of art sometimes. And so putting out these videos, um, makes me 
do like face that fear because before when I wasn't doing videos or I didn't promise videos on a certain date, I would just put it off because I was afraid. I didn't know what it would turn out. I didn't know if I would like it. I didn't know if anybody else would like it. And that's not what art is about. It's just about um, enjoying yourself and taking some time for yourself and not comparing yourself to anybody else, which I also have a big tendency to do. So, um, I don't know. I just, I love this quote and, and, and I love the way that these two kind of, I don't know, they're like tags or bookmarks or whatever. They're, I didn't do much with them. Um, my friend Nicole Watson, who was on the hop, did a really cool thing. She turned hers into like this mini art journal thing. I'm going to put a link to it up here in the iCard. Go check that out. She's got a great channel. But yeah, I love this paper. I think it's great. You can see it curled a little bit, but most papers, mixed media or not, are going to do that. One way to avoid that is to gesso both sides. So here's some close-ups. And, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to have more videos for you this week, planning on a watercolor video on Wednesday. And I've, uh, thought about what I'm going to do on Saturdays and I hope you guys like it and I'm going to keep it a surprise until Saturday. So you guys come back and check that out. But until then, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So until next time, guys, stay inspired, be creative, and share that with others. Bye.